So I recently found out that my total cholesterol is 306. Kind of scary. I don't, I'm not overweight. I'm a fitness and nutrition coach. I was like, what is going on? Well, I'm the prime example of why you really need to pay attention to how you're living going through the peri to postmenopause transition. Today, we're gonna talk about one critical change that we really need to make sure we're implementing, and that is fiber, so stick around. If you're new here, I'm Natalie Up, owner of Fired Up Fitness and the creator of the online program, the Midlife Mom Bod Tune-Up, where I've helped hundreds of women transform their peri to postmenopause years with proven methods for natural hormone support and weight loss. If this sounds like you, please like and subscribe to learn more. On both sides of my family, high cholesterol is very hereditary. I noticed when I was in perimenopause that my numbers slowly started to creep up. But since hitting menopause and losing more of those heart protecting hormones, my levels really shot up and honestly kind of freaked me out. So not all of my lipid labs were bad and I actually ended up also getting a cardiac calcium scan, which thankfully showed 0% blockage. But then I also found out that my lipoprotein A showed significant higher risk of developing heart disease because of my genetic background. Being postmenopausal on top of this news really made me stop and take inventory on what I might be slacking on. Even though I live a very healthy um, lifestyle compared to the average person. But hey, we can always do better. Let me know in the comments if you think you can do better. So this led me to really dial in my fiber intake, which I realized I was honestly only getting about half of the recommended 25 to 30 grams a day for fiber. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know I follow a low carb lifestyle sprinkled in with some smart carbs to support your hormones. But know that when you do eat low carb, that you really do have to focus on getting that fiber. Fiber is actually a type of carbohydrate found in plant-based foods, but our body can't digest or absorb it. It just passes through our digestive system, providing multiple health benefits. These include, of course, supporting our digestive health, regulating blood sugar levels, lowering our cholesterol, and helping us maintain a healthy weight. I'm gonna share 16 foods that are both high fiber and low carb. So they're gonna fit your lifestyle just great. But first, I want, I want you to be really aware of why we need this fiber. As we ride the roller coaster of peri to postmenopause, our body's definitely going through some significant changes. Some of these changes that happen during this second puberty include a slower metabolism and lower energy. We start to lose muscle. We are more sensitive to stress and we start to f store more fat because of excess sugars and toxins. But here's the thing, women can't avoid menopause. Just like we got our first period around age 13, we're gonna have our last around age 50. And all of these changes in between are going to happen whether we like it or not. So it's basically time to face the facts. We have to accept this change and it's time to take action. Hey, by the way, if you need more ideas like this beyond fiber, make sure to check out my pinned comment below this video because there's going to be a link to get a free guide called Happier Hormones Over 40. So make sure to check that out. As our hormones decrease to lower levels, on top of the changes that we can see and feel, there are also invisible health conditions that we become more susceptible to. And these include uh, poor bone health, heart health, and my friend, high cholesterol. I definitely don't wanna be a walking time bomb for a heart attack, stroke, or something like diabetes and I'm pretty sure neither do you. In my opinion, getting healthy over 40 should not just be about shedding pounds. It should be about getting strong, living your best life, and being there for your family's milestones as long as you can. 
I'm obviously passionate about this and I want this for you too. So let's get to that action part and add more fiber. There are two types of fiber, insoluble and soluble. I realized I was not getting enough of the soluble fiber. And this is the fiber that dissolves in water and when it does, becomes like a gel-like substance in your digestive system. Soluble fiber helps carry out excess cholesterol from our bodies. So why I needed probably some more of that. On the other hand, Insoluble fiber does not dissolve in water, but adds bulk to our stool. And this allows our stool to pass through our digestive system quicker and hopefully also prevent constipation. So when you're choosing carbs, you want to make sure they have more fiber in them because this is going to make a more positive impact on your health. So now let's get to what types of high fiber, low carb foods are good to incorporate. I've split this into four categories and the first category is nuts and seeds. These are a few of my favorites. Um, almonds are a great option. As you can see, I've included how much, both how much fiber and the carbs in each of the foods, um, as well as a serving size. So if you want, you can screenshot this to save it. Um, one of the things on here, chia seeds, this is definitely a soluble fiber where it's going to create that gel-like substance, but I have been um, really making sure that I include two tablespoons of chia seeds every single day. Um, I've been doing it in a easy protein shake with a a um, couple scoops of vegan protein that also has fiber in it. Um, I talked about it in my protein video. Uh, you can see the link um, in my description to learn more about that. But um, yeah, chia seeds are a great way. Uh, I prefer not to let them sit in my water to get too um, gel and like thickness consistency, but you can also make a chia seed pudding, overnight pudding, and I included that as well in my protein video. Okay, so next up is fruit. The fruit category, you really wanna focus on those berries. And most specifically, you wanna uh, include raspberries, which is gonna have the highest fiber amount with eight grams per cup of raspberries, but also blackberries are really good and strawberries are awesome um, for a low carb, high fiber fruit. Um, something that you'll see on here that you probably might not know that it's a fruit, but avocados are actually a fruit and they are um, not only have nine grams of fiber in a medium avocado, but they also are a great choice for a healthy fat. So the next category is veggies. And as you can see here, you'll see some of my favorite cruciferous vegetables, which include broccoli and the Brussels sprouts and cauliflower. Um, those are all great for um, not only balancing out hormones as you're transitioning through perimenopause especially, but they have a lot of good fiber in them. So again, you can screenshot this um, to see how many grams of fiber that they have for these low carb foods. But um, one rule of thumb I always like to do, especially at dinner, is making sure that you have half a plate of uh, vegetables, of low carb veggies at every dinner. Um, if you do it at lunch as well, uh, or even at your first meal at breakfast, maybe you're pairing it with some scrambled eggs or so forth, um, that is an extra bonus. The last category on the list is my bonus sources here. One is something that you can look forward to and one is just kind of a necessity in my head. Um, but the necessity that I've been including every single day is psyllium husk powder. You literally put uh, one teaspoon of this powder into a glass of water. I actually, um, I usually put it in, I put a little bit of my, I use electrolytes in one of my tumblers of water. And so I pour a little bit of that electrolyte water into a glass, put in my 
teaspoon of psyllium husk and served around. It doesn't have a lot of flavor. It's not, I, would, I wouldn't say it's like, oh my gosh, it's my favorite thing to drink, but you know, it's, it's again, another one of those really good soluble fibers, great for cholesterol. Um, and so it just is an easy way for me to know for a fact that I've included it in my day. And so I do take that every single day. Um, but another fun one here on the list is an 85% dark chocolate. And you want to make sure that your dark chocolate does not have soy or a lot of extra sugars. But when you're getting up to that 85%, it doesn't typically have a lot of sugars. Um, Lint has a really good, that it's a good brand for that. Um, but if you had three dark chocolate squares it's going to give you a nice little dose of fiber and a treat and you can you know not feel much guilt from that remember consistency is key just like with anything and when i was doing this for myself recently i got out a piece of paper and was tracking how many um, grams added up throughout the day to try to get to that 30 grams um, so, you know, take a few days, see what, you know, is going to fit into your schedule and into your meals. You know, I hadn't done actual protein shakes for quite a while, but because I just started using this new, um, vegan protein, uh, protein powder and it had fiber in it, I thought, and I actually really like it. I thought I might as well just start doing that. It's an easy thing then to add in more of the chia seeds to get more fiber. It's just one of those super convenient things for me. Um, but I would highly recommend you at least, I don't think that you need to count your insoluble versus um, soluble, but I would make sure you're including definitely some sources of the soluble fiber, those gel like, um, the gel like fiber. So, you know, make sure you're doing at least chia seeds or the psyllium husk or do like I'm doing and do both. So just a good way to incorporate that. Just start slow and ease into it and make sure you're also drinking enough water with that fiber. If you found this video helpful, please like and share it with your friends. And if you need more step-by-step -step guidance, make sure to check out the Midlife Mom Bod Tune-Up, which is my online program where I'm helping women transform their peri to post-menopause years. I'll put that link in the description below. Well, looks like it's time to go. Hope you're feeling fired up. Bye.